these models do offer great value for money. And certainly for those of you who are into modern image, these are an absolute must, and at this price you just can't ignore them. Haulage capacity was really, really good, even though it only has drive to a single bogey tower, and this really didn't seem to phase the model at all. It's equipped with an 8-pin DCC socket, and it is quite easy to DCC fit it. Oh, hello there! So great to see you, and I hope you are well. I'm Jenny Kirk, and I'm welcoming you up here to Weir Yard, where today we're on another bargain hunt. And uh, certainly there's a lot of sales about at the moment. It's autumn, it's the run-up to Christmas, and actually it's the perfect time for sales because I think a lot of people will be looking at uh, picking up Christmas presents, maybe. And, uh, well, it's always a great time to treat yourself, too. And I know that price is always a big, hot topic of conversation. So uh, when I saw the TMC autumn sale, and in particular, the locomotives that really caught my eye were the Class 67s. Now, these are a Hornby Railroad Plus model, and £58.19, that's the sale price that TMC have got, the um, diamond silver version that you see there behind me, but also a coalless rail version as well. I thought, I wonder how good these models actually are, because they're firmly on the radar for the budget conscious, and maybe uh, you are an older modeler, you know, money is really tight, this could be a model that really should be firmly on your radar. Or maybe you're a younger modeler having to save up through pocket money and uh, Saturday jobs. And certainly this is well within the affordable window. But does it stack up as a model? Well, I managed to get hold of one and I'm going to be putting it through its paces in today's video. So come with me and let's take a look and see whether this budget £58.19 model is one that you should really consider getting, because at that price, how can they possibly stick around for long? Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support comes from This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at clarkrailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. First of all, I'd like to ask a big, big favour. It's a really great way of supporting the channel by hitting that like button and maybe even sharing the video to social media such as Facebook or otherwise. And if you haven't already done so, please, please, please consider subscribing to the channel and ringing that bell to be the first to know about the new video content as it comes up. You can also find us over on Patreon and we've got multiple tiers of rewards to suit anybody who wants to help support the channel to keep making the videos that you want to see. But today it's bargain hunt time and at £58.19 for a brand new locomotive that's actually cheaper than I've seen these turn up second hand. Is the model worth the money? It's the turn of the Hornby Railroad Plus Class 67 that I found in the TMC Autumn Sale. Come with me and let's take a good close look. <laughs> On a recent Monday Club, we talked a little bit about all the autumn sales that are happening, and in particular, on the uh, about the TMC autumn sale. And there's quite a few really standout items that's gone into this. And I was saying on the stream about the Class 67. Now, I'm not a modern image fan myself, but certainly at the price that these were at, it's very hard to not take notice. And uh, at £58.19, uh, that's what they're selling them for in the sale. They've got two different liveries. I thought, you know, that is a great deal, especially in the run-up to Christmas, especially when people are complaining about the rising cost of the hobby. 
And these are locomotives that you could actually save up out of pocket money for. Certainly, they're very much in the impulse purchase area. So that is exactly what I've gone and done. And uh, I've uh, managed to get hold of one of those Class 67s from the TMC sale. So £58.19. They're showing plenty of these in stock. And they've also got the same model, but in colas livery as well at exactly the same price. Now these are the Railroad Plus range of models and we have reviewed some of these before, the Class 37 and the Class 55, and actually I was very impressed by the Class 37. It's an older model, but the standard of the printing definitely brought that model right into contention. And with this, with the amazing price and the fact that we've got that extra level of decoration, I thought, let's take a good close look. And uh, it's actually got working lights as well. And this was a criticism that we did level against the 37 and the 55, but the 67 has the lights out of the box. The catalogue number on this is R30178, and this is the DB Rail Class 67 Bobo Royal Diamond number 67029. Now, the locomotive itself, uh, the 67s were built between 1999 and 2000, intended as a direct replacement for the Class 47s, principally for mail traffic work, um, but later on, some of them did take over from other 47 duties, including the Royal Train, and two of them were painted in Royal Claret for those duties. In 2004, 67029 was renamed Royal Diamond for the, the Diamond uh, Jubilee for the Queen, and uh, that number has stayed with it since. Uh, now, the original livery featured the EWS logo, uh, full height, and then later on, when DB Cargo took over, that's been replaced with the DB logo. And it's that later livery that we have here in the box. Now, it is a build as DCC ready, and we will look into that. And one of the first things that is very apparent when we get out of the box is a thank you, Hornby. Thank you. This is, uh, we've finally done away with the awful polystyrene. And that means that uh, for the James Mays in this world, this box is almost all completely possible to put in the recycling. And I think that that is a great move. So thank you so much, Hornby. And um, that in itself is a good move. Now, we've also got the paperwork here, operating instructions, and um, we've got some buffer beam detail. There, there is things going on, so we can remove couplings and put full buffer beam detail into play. And uh, we get some information on body removal, looks to have an 8-pin DCC socket, and just a little bit of information about maintenance. Now, we talked a little bit just there about some of these extra parts. And what's immediately apparent are these etched um, nameplates, and also we've got some additional um, uh, plates on there as well. And these on this model really are essential. I think this is a great move by Hornby, putting these in the box, because when we do look at the model, the printing is really sharp, but it's over those side ribs. So this is definitely an area where I, I, I would suggest definitely replacing the printed on name plates and this plate underneath with the etched variety that comes with it. And the fact that these do come with it means you don't have to mess about with aftermarket stuff. And then we've also got the bag with all of that buffer beam detail. Enough for both ends, and uh, that means that we can correctly uh, model the front ends as they appear without the big chunky tension lock couplings. The first area that I want to look at on this model is the front face. And generally speaking, what Hornby have captured, they have done well, particularly this wraparound at the side and the sloped front, which gives us quite a complicated set of curves and flats as it goes up over the top of the cab roof. The roof of the body itself features this very, very strange uh, flat uh, pieces with the sudden change in angles with three different flats, flat top, and then three more flats to curve back round to the slab-sided body sides. 
I can't decide when looking at 67 photos online just how prominent these are. Certainly the darker liveries and a degree of weathering does hide this well. And you must remember that this is quite a bright clean silver being shown under some very bright studio light. So this does make it a little bit more severe than perhaps you would see in photographs. But overall, as far as I can tell, Hornby have captured the shape reasonably well with the caveat that these do look a little bit sharper in focus in model form. Looking to the front face itself of the cab, this is where that Railroad Plus detailing comes in and you can see we have items like these jumper cables which are a very prominent feature of the Real Class 67 and these are a combination of relief detail here painted orange and straight up printed on detail which you can just see here very very sharply applied. So sharp in fact that I had to run my nail over these just to assure myself that that was purely printed on detail. The rest of the printing too, incredibly sharp, including the legend there underneath the plug socket, which is a correct relief moulded item. It is part of the body shell, but certainly it is really well done. And the DB2 is crisp and sharp. The light clusters are correctly pronounced out from the body front, and we do have a degree of printing on these to hide the fact that the only lights that light up are the white forward-facing lights. We saw that on the box, and actually, when I've had this running on DC, these work incredibly well. There was no flicker with them, and they come on in the direction of travel perfectly every time. The red lens here does seem a little bit on the bright side. It's non-working. But actually, it's um, probably a bit hard to tell, and certainly after a little bit of weathering, you'd never know whether these are visible in red to any degree, even when the lights are off. The locomotives would only ever use the red rear marker lights when running light locomotives, something which they're unlikely to be tasked with all that often. So I don't see it a massive problem not having them, and I'd rather a locomotive didn't have them than did if they cannot be independently switched off. The buffers are moulded plastic, and they're not sprung, but again, doesn't need to be. The coupling is rather large and this is an area where the model could be improved by fitting a slimmer tension lock coupling, but we certainly don't have the huge plastic goalposts that we saw on the Class 55 model and this is certainly a much better step and much less obtrusive and it does seem to be better functionally as well. This lower skirt is changeable and it's an area where those extra parts that come included with the model will allow you to accurately model the front face of the locomotive when in traffic and remove the need to look at this large coupling. And it should be said that um, you'd only need to retain this coupling on the front of the locomotive if you were not using it to haul in this direction. The inside of the cab is quite plain to see through these windows. The glazing is flush and really nicely done. I do like these separately fitted wipers. These appear to be a plastic moulded part but are reasonably robust and are on the model in the parked at the side of the windscreen position. This very very large screen does mean that we can see in and see that there is no detailed cab interior. It is finished in black which does make it a lot less obtrusive but the floor comes right up to the level of the windows and this is an area where I would recommend considering a driver figure just to obscure that. They're readily available from a number of different sources, although you will have to cut them off at the waist and then stick them on, but it will improve the look. Looking down the side of the model, this livery is probably the least forgiving of the liveries that are available, and certainly if you went for the colourless livery, a uh, number of the slightly less detailed bits of the body base would be much less apparent but I've had to turn off one of my studio lights. The combination of the reflection from the silver and this camera was making it strobe somewhat terribly so I do apologise if some of the darker details do appear to be left in the shadow. The model features all-wheel pickup but as you can see here one bogey is freewheeling and the motor drives just the other bogey on its own. The bogey detail 
is moulded relief, but it is really quite well done, and uh, certainly this shows what can be achieved with a one-piece moulding, and that certainly contributed to keeping the costs down. The characteristic door on these appears to be about the same design as those on the Class 66, and certainly the engine and uh, alternator that is inside this locomotive are the same as those that feature on the Class 66s. The difference comes in the gearing and the provision of the electric train heat. I'm really quite impressed with these body side grills. This is another area that Hornby have shown that moulded on detail can be just as good as expensive separately applied etched parts. Whilst you can't see right through into the body of the model, I'd wager that this is something that wouldn't bother most people. And you can see there, as I change the angle, that they've really got a great effect with that internal structure that makes it look like this is a 3D part. The rest of the body side features the characteristic ribbed finish, and this is definitely something that the silver livery really does bring to the fore. Looking beneath the sole bar, the moulding is a little bit more on the utilitarian side, but then again, these locomotives were a little bit on the utilitarian side as they were built. The printing is still on here, and this is another area where you can see we've got the fuel and other warning marks there, and these are really sharply done. The explosive and the electrical hazard are clearly visible as being accurate to what they should be. Now this is an area where a light dusting of weathering would really bring this model to the fore. Squeaky clean like this out of the box just isn't how they'd normally be seen. And that's an area where TMC also offer a basic weathering service. And I'd say that given the price on this, you could go for the basic weathering and still come in underneath what you'd be charged from other retailers for the same locomotive. And that would really bring alive some of this underframe detail. The printing of the nameplates, as we've already drawn attention to, is something that is a little bit weird because of the limitations of printing onto this ribbed body side. But we don't have to worry because we've got etched plates with this model which will cover those up and I'm going to fit those later on. We've got some more detail again moulded on down here at the base and then we move on to the other bogey. Same style bogey frames, fully moulded. But this time we've got a uh, fully powered bogey, and this does feature uh, traction tyres which are alternating. So we've got two traction tyres for grip, but these are on that axle on that side, and that axle on that side, and that really does improve the running performance. The other end of the model features a duplication of the detailing that we saw at the other end. Again, you can change the coupling for the uh, fully detailed end with all of the pipework, and there are enough parts that come with this to do both. Again, we've got a cab interior with that uh, flat floor, uh, which, uh, again, if this is going to be the leading end, would benefit from a driver figure. Looking down the other side, well, again, we've got a repeat of these grills, but again, we these are different. This grill itself here doesn't feature the internal structure correctly, and these are a different pattern from those that we saw on the other side. Again, looking down here, we've got these uh, really quite crisp bits of printing, and this enhanced Railroad Plus livery really does show this off well. This other side of the body also features these grills too, and the access doors, and captures the look and feel of the 67 well. Looking down on the top, just bear in mind this is under very unsympathetic bright studio lights, and this is an area that a light weathering would really serve to tone down the angularness of this and certainly in the photographs that I've seen online of the 67 it's difficult to tell whether these are more severe curves than the real locomotive or whether under natural lighting and with a muted livery these do tend to blend in more. What is obvious though is that we have got some really nice relief detail on the exhaust and silencer array on the roof and this is incredibly well done. The choice of colours too 
is sublime and certainly makes that look like metal that has been through something like a galvanizing or an anodizing process and definitely this exhaust cluster is really quite great on this model and I really do like what they've done. We have relief detail of the roof hatches and then this area I really do like again We've got this grill, and this actually does feel like this is a separately applied part. It is well attached, but we've got a great depth of detail to this roof grill, and the black with the silver picks this off perfectly. And then we return to the cab styling on the end, and you can see from above that we've got the correct taper that you expect as per the prototype Class 67. Running on DC, the locomotive was incredibly responsive, coming to life from about 5% power, and uh, by the time we reached 40% power, it did seem to be quite capable of chugging along at a reasonable speed. The lighting functions came on and stayed on without flickering or changing of brightness really quite well, and overall it was capable of quite a good turn of speed, but do remember that the prototype itself was uh, rated to run at 125 miles per hour and had been clocked out at a maximum of around 143 miles per hour so she was no sedate lady on the tracks. For DCC fitting you're going to need an 8-pin decoder and I've got here a couple of Trainomatic 8-pin decoders though we're only going to need one of these. You don't need any screwdrivers to get into this and don't let the two screws that hold in the uh, bottom of the model and the fuel tanks fool you, don't undo them, then nothing at all to do with getting the body off. Now this takes a little bit of practice, but you can just see there, work a thumbnail in between the silver body and the black chassis. Slide along and you'll start to find where the clips are, and with a click it will pop free. There are no wires going up into the body, so no need to worry about pulling anything out. Place that to one side and you can see here that the front lights are taken care of with these light boards which shine in through this uh, angled and uh, designed perspex which uh, moves the light to exactly where it needs to be without any bleed through. You can see inside as well we've got pickups to all wheels and a motor housed at the top of this bogey tower. The 8 pin decoder socket is here and I'm just going to use a flat head screwdriver to carefully prise that up a little bit at one side then a little bit at the other and just rock it backwards and forwards don't lever it all from one side because what will tend to happen is you'll bend all these pins whilst the eight pin sockets are very robust it's inadvisable to uh, put too much stress in case we do break free some of the solder underneath and that could cause intermittent problems. On the circuit board you can see there pin 1 is identified and that always corresponds on an 8 pin decoder with the orange wire so we know how to orientate this to make sure that everything works. Carefully line up the pins and then with a gentle pressure rock it backwards and forwards down into place. You don't need a huge amount of pressure and if you find yourself pushing and pushing and it won't go in then the chances are you've got the pins misaligned and you need to stop and double check that to avoid causing any damage. The Trainomatic decoders come with a uh, shrink wrap over them which stops any kind of issues with shorting. So we can quite carefully just tuck this in and I'm going to use these loops of wire just to make sure that it uh, gets held in place. Once we've done that it's a very easy job to just carefully feed the body back down and then push down. If you need to just pull the sides apart and it should just click back into place. Out of the box these will be set to decoder ID 3. We can transfer that to the programming track and change it to whatever ID you wish to have for the locomotive. And then it's off to the main layout and to see how well it runs. 
But first, one of the things I do want to do is to put on those etched plates. I'm not normally somebody who's a big fan of adding these. Generally, the printing quality is good enough that we can get by without it. But on this model, the ribbed sides do mean that this is going to be a major step up. Very carefully on a flat surface, we're just going to uh, separate the nameplates from the etch. Make sure you get them the right way up. It's very easy to uh, get focused in with tunnel vision and uh, make a bit of a hash. And I'm going to use a PVA on the back and you don't need a huge amount. The beauty of PVA is that if you have any excess, it can be wiped off and it gives you time to uh, reposition it if you need to. Use the original printing as your template and just lay the nameplates over the top and just make sure that you get it all lined up. We can repeat that with the next nameplate again with this. We need to just make sure that we get this the right way up. If you're unsure it's always possible to uh, take a good look at the one that's already on the model. So if you have not quite as good an eyesight perhaps as you used to, that's a great way of just making sure that if you copy like for like, you've got it the right way up. A little bit of PVA. I'm going to use an old screwdriver just to spread that out. And we've got that the same way around as the original was. Just going to Place that over the top and down. Just nudge that uh, royal diamond. That's not a problem because we can just reposition very, very carefully, get that in the right place. And then it's just simply a case of letting that dry and we can repeat as well on the other side. When it comes to the performance on the track, this model actually did really well, considering that it's only driven to a single bogey. Those traction tyres do help, and the staggered nature of these does a lot to improve the performance, without making the model seem rather clunky on the curves. On the torture test track, the model actually performed better than most models, and I put this down to those traction tyres really helping with the grip. It was a sure and steady performer, taking in the 5% gradients, the twists, the turns, and radius 1 curves with uh, an actually longer than normal train of TTA tank wagons. Passing this test, it was on to the main line, where with a rake of coaches, it handled itself really quite well, chugging on round with uh, quite a nice turn of speed. The Trainomatic Decoder really does tame the motor in this model and stops it from being an all or nothing kind of thing. And I got some really good slow speed control, albeit that the motor does buzz a little bit at lower speeds and there is a small degree of cogging. But for the price, it really is great value for money. It even took in the uh, reverse curves and double slip running, which is something that many models really do find a challenge. And overall, I was actually quite pleasantly surprised by the performance of this model, and it gets good marks from me. So we turn now to the scores. First up is build quality, and overall this seemed pretty robust, although there aren't that many additionally added parts. The body itself is fairly easy to come off and clips back down with a very, very positive click. The only area where I felt that there were a some degree of difficulty is the additional detail on the buffer beam. Some of the extra pipes and such like proved just a little bit too difficult to get into the holes and I ended up giving up on some of the additional parts, although the parts that did go on went on really, really well. The couplings themselves are just a little bit on the chunky side, though they can be removed and it is possible to jury rig a slimline tension lock in their place. They're not as big and obtuse as the very large goalpost style couplings and are quite a happy medium between the two, which means that this model will actually couple up with both old and new stock quite well. 
Overall, pretty good, and I'm going to give it a 9.1. On running quality, again, the model performed reasonably well. Haulage capacity was really, really good, even though it only has drive to a single bogey tower, and this really didn't seem to phase the model at all. It got round radius 1 curves, and dealt with some of the really quite poorly laid track of the torture test track, plus those steep gradients and twists and turns. It even got through some really quite complex point work with no issues whatsoever. The only areas where the running quality didn't quite match up to the more expensive models was there was a degree of cogging at uh, exceptionally low speeds and the motor is quite noisy as well at those lower speeds. And uh, one of the other areas where I did feel that it wasn't quite as smooth as it could be was that when it was taking reverse curves, it did seem to wobble ever so slightly on the bogies. But overall, I thought that this is a great effort from Hornby, and I'm going to give it an 8.9. On DCC fitting and innovation, it's uh, equipped with an 8-pin DCC socket and it is quite easy to get the body off to get inside and to DCC fit it. You don't really need any tools, which is a great plus point, and uh, the body itself goes back on really, really well. It's great to see that this model does feature a degree of directional lighting, and whilst there are no red rear marker lights, I actually find these to be a little bit of a distraction, in that if they cannot be independently turned off, then it means that for most applications, the locomotive looks wrong, showing a red light when there is actually a train behind it. The DCC fitting itself was a doddle, and the Trainomatic 8-pin decoder really calmed down some of the high end on the motor that is uh, equipped on this model. And all in all, it's a good, solid, robust effort from Hornby, to which I give it an 8.4. On accuracy and quality of finish, well, the quality of finish is really good. The uh, extra printing that this model comes with really do set it off. And I do like some of the really obvious detail parts, such as this exhaust and silencer on the roof. I think that has been done exceptionally well. The silver livery is quite unforgiving on the body style, and I do think that a bit of a dash of weathering would really help bring this model to the fore. And that might be something that you spend your savings on, uh, on maybe getting a value weathering that will really bring this model alive. All in all, I thought it is a pretty good effort for a Railroad Plus model. I'm going to give it a 7.9. On value for money, well, even at the full RRP, which is uh, just a little under £100, these models do offer great value for money in today's market. But at £58.19, that is in the autumn sale from TMC, with a coalless rail version available as well at exactly the same price, this really does push it up to being a great value for money. That means that it's within the reach of uh, younger modelers who are able to save up for this, or indeed the cash-strapped ones too. For those of you who are into modern image, these are an absolute must, and at this price you just can't ignore them. They're not likely to hang around that long, and certainly TMC have said when I've queried this, that uh, whilst they will be taking supplies that are left to Worley, they expect they will probably all sell out, if indeed they haven't already sold out before then. So if this is an absolute must, maybe for yourself, or perhaps as a gift for a younger modeler in the run-up for Christmas, then certainly get in quick. And we've got a link in the description box down below that takes you to the TMC site to find both this and the Colas Rail liveried version. All in all, it gets a full 10 out of 10 in this category, giving us a final score of 44.3. Even though I'm not personally into modern image, it gets a thumbs up seal of approval. Well, I hope you really enjoyed today's video and found it informative, and uh, we have reviewed Railroad Plus models in the past, and this is another in that kind of middle road range that Hornby have been releasing. And I'd love to know what you thought about it. Do leave a comment down below about your thoughts on this model. Is it something that you've got? Maybe you've got a, a Class 67 from back in the day. How does the Railroad Plus version stack up with uh, when it was first and foremost a brand new model 
people in the Hornby range about 20 or so years ago. And certainly, what do you think about the price? Is £58.19 a great price on this? And is this one that maybe it wasn't on your radar, but it is now? I'd love to hear from you. It's always great to hear from you. And of course, don't forget that we've got a link in the description box down below to take you to the TMC Autumn Sale, where I found this Class 67 at an amazing £58.19. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take great care of yourself and happy modelling. Keep those model railways coming. It's a great hobby with so many transferable skills. And we'd love to see from you and hear from you in the Monday Club Facebook group. We've got a link for that down below as well. Uh, just come on in there. We've got a great community going where you can share pictures, videos and such like of your latest build. Ask questions, maybe get some tech answers as well. Help and support for the hobby. That's what this is all about. And uh, looking forward to seeing you there. But until next time, this is me, Jenny Kirk, saying take care of yourself. Bye for now. Today's video comes in association with Trainomatic, makers of DCT decoders and accessories that are designed by enthusiasts for enthusiasts. Find the full range available to order now at tramfabrique.co.uk. Additional support is provided by This is Clark Railworks and this is what we do. You'll know us from Ellis Clark Trains and you'll get the same friendly expertise with us too. We've got a huge range of pre-owned model railways from all your favourite manufacturers and maybe some you hadn't heard of before. It's the place to come for quality. We don't stock substandard models and everything we sell is fully tested and photographed by model railway experts. No matter whether you model double O gauge, N, HO or more, we have sought after models from all around the world with new listings added every weekday. Check out what's available now at ClarkRailworks.com and don't miss out on your latest logo. I'd like to thank everybody over on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to our Patreon heroes. Without you guys over on Patreon, we really wouldn't be able to keep making the video content that you see on this channel. And don't forget that you can also head on over to patreon.com slash Jennifer Kirk and check out the different tiers of rewards. Thank you so, so much. You are absolute legends.